everyone welcome back to my channel life with stephanie this is i'm stephanie <laughs> um so a lot of the videos you've probably seen so far are videos talking about like kind of our story of moving or tips as a, a military wife or a new military wife that sort of thing if you're here thanks for being here be sure if you haven't you know give us a thumbs up if you like this video subscribe if you haven't click that bell to make sure you get notified of um other videos and content coming to you. So on this channel, I'm sharing stories as a military wife in military life, but also just life in general. We live very natural life. Um, my husband's always asked, you know, you're in such great shape. And being someone who joined later in life, uh, not always heard of, it does happen. It is a unique and it is kind of, um, he's in his prime, but at the same time, we've just been really good about trying to take care of ourselves. So I wanna talk about some of that stuff here on the channel. And lately I've just been really focusing on kind of the military side of things since we just got settled in our first duty station and it's all fresh in my brain. I thought I would share the, kind of that journey with you. All right, so this video is all about how, for me, um, as a spouse, um, my side of the story of how my husband um, joined the military. Ours is unique. I wanted to share it because I know when he was joining, we were watching lots of YouTube videos about people joining the, the Army, Air Force, you know, Navy, Marines, any of that. We were just looking at videos, especially me, just to kind of get an idea, heads up. Then I was connecting with military friends or um, people who were spouses in the military to get my questions answered and to have an understanding. I like to have a plan. I like to understand why. That's always how I've been. So hopefully this video is helpful for you guys. Um, if it is, be sure to let us know. All right, so we're gonna dive into the story. We, so it'll be two years and a few months now. Um, it's been a year, a little over a year and a half since my husband went off to basic. So we're gonna start there. Actually, no, we're gonna rewind a little bit. Um, <laughs> Because I want you guys to know my reaction. I'm sure some of you as a spouse may be learning or going through this. Maybe um, they're joining the military and you are going, oh my goodness, this is, this is going to be different. Um, for us, my husband worked for seven years in ministry and um, he, I knew for a long time he had a calling for something else. So I've always known he's had military as an interest, but until it happens, yeah, it's a whole different story. <laughs> so that's today's story. Today's story starts when um, he went to the recruiter's office and he did find out everything cleared and he was eligible. And in that moment, I think it really hit me. That's where I'm going to start from. So when he was, um, signing stuff and he had his date to swear in. Um, that was, that was the moment that I knew life is changing again for us. And it was, it was beautiful. It was scary. It was all the emotion rolled into one and, um, a lot of pride, a lot of pride and being proud of him doing what he was really excited to do and what he was called to do. So yes, it was hard. Yes, it was scary. Yes, it was sad, but it was exhilarating. So if you really um, are caring for someone, love someone, you're, you kind of know that feeling where if you're a mom, you're so excited when your kid does so well because you love them so much and you want them to just blossom and be the best they can be. I was seeing the best in what I, I knew and of my husband to be. And I saw the excitement and I, I saw how genuinely um, happy he was that he get, he finally get, got to do what he has always wanted to do. So with that, um, when we had swore in, he kind of had two swear ins. He had the original swear in um, and then he, I think he had a month before he actually left. And the day he left, they did another swearing in, similar ceremony, and we saw him off. It was hard. There were a lot of tears. Um, his parents were there. They drove us, and they were there um, both times he swore in. 
and we had pictures and um, having him drive off, it did feel a little bit like my heart had left. And so it was hard, but a really good friend, one of the tips I shared in one of my videos said, uh, or will share, I don't know what order these are going in, um, is to journal or to write to him. So through basic, I could write to him and send him letters and I did and I would send him pictures and he loved that. So if you're looking for those tips, we could do a whole nother video on what to send your soldier, um, where they're basic and what not to send your soldier. Um, either one, we could do that. Uh, but be sure to comment, let me know. So he joined, he went off. There were a couple weeks I heard well, I heard he got there. I got a really quick phone call he got there, but I didn't even know if he was actually in basic because they, they do hold. Um, that was hard. So we did spend a year apart when, um, when I did my internship and it was several years prior, but we could talk to each other every day. So this was a very different experience. Um, even when we were dating, we, there's a couple times we spent some of the summers apart, um, because we lived in different states. So, uh, he, this was weird because we didn't get to hear anything. Um, and it was, it was just strange. So, especially when it's your best friend, you talk to them all, every day and you've been living with them for seven years every day. It is weird. So he went off and I didn't hear a lot. What really helped was being a part of the Facebook group that was part of his basic training. So my husband went to basic training um, for Jackson and uh, got connected with a family support group through that and that was amazing. So if you're looking for that or needing that, I highly recommend it. Met a lot of great moms in there. Um, one of my dearest friends, her son went through the same, <laughs> same basic training um, as my husband, same time and everything. And she lived in the same state. So we actually, we got to meet each other and that has been incredible because we, she's just been a huge support and a great friend and just my military sister um, and feels like a sister. So it's been amazing to have that. And that was kind of my first taste. They say you, you can develop some amazing lifelong friendships um, and almost like new sisters and brothers when you're in the military. And I definitely was getting that sense pretty early on and it was incredible. So I got connected that way. Um, that was super helpful. We were always looking for the photos if they had photos <laughs> posted on the Facebook group um, and, and just like squinting to see, is that, is that him? Um, so that was great. Getting those letters as a, as a wife, or even if you're a girlfriend, getting those letters or a mom oh, and the phone calls, oh, those were precious. So for me, my first actual, um, phone call from him, um, was during a really good friend's wedding and I missed her whole ceremony because he called. She is such an understanding. Um, both of them are very understanding and that was, that was huge, but I left right before she walked in and I saw her just like, take the call. And I talked to him and I got to hear about his experience. And that's the other thing is it's just been great to be able to stop. And a lot of friends have um, understood that, accepted that some friends may not, but your life sometimes will revolve around their life to support them and be there because they need that's this, that stability um, and that reminder of who you are because they love you. They need to mentally take a break from work, from life um, in, in that sense. And so I knew that and I knew I needed to just be there for him. And it was the first time I was talking to him in a month, something like that, um, via the phone, which was huge. So yes, things like that. Our anniversary had come up and I think it was our eight year anniversary. And I started crying <laughs> a lot that day. It was rough. Um, and I had those moments, I had those days, writing him or journaling about my days to him, even if I couldn't always send them out. Um, Cause there's a point that in basic, we had to stop sending letters. I could give it to him later. 
I got to have holiday block leave with him, which if you don't know what that is, they get a um, few weeks off if they're in trainings for Christmas and New Year's, they get that off um, and you get to see them. And that was awesome. It was wonderful. We both did not feel well. We were, we both got sick. It was a lot of just snuggling on the couch. Um, yes, going to see family, but it was also just trying to have alone time and do some things together. So that was great to have. Um, over time, he kind of shared more stories. At first, he was just, he was exhausted, so worn out, but I could still see that, that spark and that passion. He went off to AIT. Um, that uh, COVID did make some things a lot longer, but I've also been told this can happen where it, like same as basic, he missed the, fir the actual start date for his basic just because they had so many processing in. Um, AIT, it was the same thing. If you're not sure what AIT is, that's the advanced individual training. So that's whatever they're learning for their job. So he did his AIT. Um, and we got to talk more. That was a little more lax where we got to talk a little bit more. He had weekends off typically unless he had a, a shift to do. Um, and we could FaceTime sometimes. So that was really nice. And that was a lot easier. The support group for that on Facebook wasn't great. It depends on what they're doing, where they're going. Every AIT, depending on what their job is, is different. So his just kind of ended up being longer because of COVID in the sense he started a little bit later or end a little later, that sort of thing, um, and didn't get out of there right away to his next school. So then he had another school he went to, um, training that he did and again with COVID that just things took longer um, as well so that one was harder where we I think we got weekends we could talk to each other no no it was afterwards so once he finished and he um, was because he was then sent when he fit when you finish all the schools they're they're sent to whatever their duty station is typically and they have to do a lot of forms and things so thankfully where he had finished um, I know he did airborne and stuff so he had several schools he was doing um, you don't always get to talk to them when they're doing training or things like that and um, we mailed some here or there but it really wasn't easy for him um, to do that to get mail um, not having a vehicle and having to borrow or get rides so now being in Georgia, which is where he did his school and training, um, I should say jump, jump school, um, airborne school, whatever, the, the, I could get in trouble if I don't say the wrong terminology. Um, so he did that and we, there was just some time with getting us moved. So through all that, a year and a half, it was stressful like getting us moved it was there was a lot of oh it's happening now oh it's you know i think it's gonna be soon or that's what he's being told no nope, stuff's not done this isn't done because he had to just get certain things done to be able to get us moved um we actually had a place to live <laughs> uh, which does not normally happen we had a place to live before we could even move into it and we had it for about a month because he didn't have he has to actually have his orders to take to transportation to be able to get, book his flights and all of that um, to move and, and to get everything done. So it was a lot of back and forth. For me, it was stressful during that time because, okay, are we moving or are we not? And then having a small business, um, trying to plan stuff, it was relying on team members to, to kind of pull through for me. And then I happened to have really bad mold exposure, so I really wasn't feeling well either. So mentally, my brain was just like, ah! Um, and it was a stressful time and a lot of people were like, you're handling it so gracefully. A lot of it is just keeping in mind. And I would say it's the army, it's the military. It's going to happen. Plans are going to change. It's going to go back and forth and it has, and it will, and it continue, it will continue to. So I have no control over it. And then thankfully that is one of the things I've really learned is to kind of go with the flow and be, be chill, be okay with it. Um, to have plan A through Z and it's it's been helpful to have that. The other biggest thing is having support and knowing other military wives 
or people who've been in before um, or you know their spouses were in and they were in together that's been really helpful to have that or family that I've been in and to ask questions and to have those connections because there's times that got me through good friendships and relationships that's what got me through especially when I can um, talk to my spouse and I know will continue to help so it's a little bit of our story. I know it kind of rambled and it went all over, but hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully it was helpful. If you guys have a story you want to connect, love to hear from you guys. And if you are new to the military family, welcome to the family. If you're new to the army family, welcome to the family. So thanks for watching this video. Again, be sure to subscribe, click that button, and be sure to click that bell so that you can be informed of any other videos. All right, we'll see you all next time. Bye.